you and thank you for worshiping with us. For those not able to be here with us today, we know that you're here in spirit, and we look forward to that time when you can be back with us worshiping in person. Uh, just a reminder, we're still not able to sing, and we ask that you please stay in your seat for the entire worship service. Should you need to use the restrooms, if you go out this door and make a right, at the end of the hall make a second right. The ladies' room is the first door on the right, and the men's room is the third door on the right. And there are also disinfecting wipes in there, should you care to use them before or after you use the facilities. Let us now quiet our hearts and our minds, and turn our attention to the Lord as we come to worship this day. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense to your teachings and your ways. Come us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life, and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved of God, Jesus, the manna from in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven, and you are loved into abundant life. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful in compassion, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our worship continues as we hear God's holy word for this day. Although this is not Good Shepherd Sunday, the lessons before us do speak to us about shepherds and uh, the fact that we are all called to be the sheep of God's pasture. In the first reading from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, Jeremiah prophesied before the exile in 587 BC. And in this passage, he uses the metaphor of a shepherd to describe the bad kings who have scattered the flock of Israel. God promises to gather the flock and to raise up a new king from David's line to save Israel and Judah. And now the reading, verses 1 through 6. <coughs> Woe to the shepherds! who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So, I will attend to you you for your evil doings says the Lord then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them and I will bring them back to their fold they shall be fruitful and multiply I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. They shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us now read responsibly the very familiar words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God's desire is always for reconciliation, to bring us together that we might live together in peace and in harmony. God has called us to be members of God's household. In the second reading for this morning, 
from the second chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, we hear these words concerning that theme, verses 11 through 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So, he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also were built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Here now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus, and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no time for leisure, even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there by foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, Jesus saw the great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to Gisenerent and moored their boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized them and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was and wherever he went. Into the villages, the cities, the farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Two-year-old Danny was tired and distraught, all out of sorts, and so was his mother. It was an unusually trying day. Nothing was going right for them. As the day wore on, things got even worse. To him, everything seemed to go wrong. Mom was yelling at him at every turn. It seemed like life had become one big mountain of frustration. 
How many of us have had days like that where everything is a big mountain of frustration? Maybe these days more than ever. Finally, toward the end of the day, when it seemed he couldn't take it anymore, Danny toddled over the to the table, picked up his mother's cell phone, and without touching buttons, said to nobody in particular, in a voice full of despair needing tender loving care, Give me my daddy, please! <laughs> Danny wanted his daddy to rescue him from all the frustrations, from the hurts, the trouble, the brokenness that he was feeling in life. He needed someone else besides his mother to turn to. He needed someone to bring change into his situation. He needed someone who could appreciate and care for his feelings, his hurts, his inability to handle the challenges in life. So he asked, give me my daddy, please. In our gospel lesson this morning, the people came to Jesus with that same kind of desperation. They needed someone to direct them and to care for them. The text says, now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns, and they arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, Jesus saw a crowd, a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. They saw Jesus, and they ran to him with all their frustrations, with all their hurts, with all their brokenness. They ran to Jesus, and in a sense, said as Danny did in, his, in the story, give me my daddy, please. Notice in verse 34, it says, as Jesus went ashore, he saw the great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Jesus saw the crowds of people, and although he was tired, remember he and his disciples were going to a deserted place for rest, but nonetheless, he had compassion on them. Jesus saw that they needed a shepherd, they needed someone to guide them and care for them, and in good Jesus fashion, he once again put the needs of others ahead of his, ahead of his own needs, despite his exhaustion. And we're told he had compassion on them and began to teach them. He had compassion on them. What does it mean to have compassion? What do you think of when you hear the word compassion? In Greek, it's siponia. And when I looked up siponia, it means sympathy, mercy, charity, to commiserate with someone. And if you go to the English dictionary, it says, see also the word mercy, which means compassion or forgiveness, shown towards someone who it was in, within one's power to punish or harm. <coughs> Jesus had compassion for the people. He had concern for their suffering. He had forgiveness and mercy. When I hear this, read this gospel message, I can't help think of a story that I learned many years ago that I heard about. And it just speaks of Jesus' compassion. And I can't help but think of Jesus as like the man riding the horse in this story. There's a story told about a bitter cold evening in Northern Virginia many years ago. An old man sat by the river waiting for a ride across. His beard was glazed over by the winter's frost. He waited for it seemed like an endless period of time. His body became numb and stiff from the frigid north wind. Then finally he heard a faint, steady rhythm of approaching hoofs galloping along the frozen path. <laughs> Anxiously, he watched as several horsemen rounded the bend. He let the first one pass by without an effort to get his attention. And then another one passed by. And then another one. And then another one. Finally, the last rider neared the spot where the old man was like a statue in the snow. As this one drew near, the old man caught the rider's eye, and he said to him, Sir, would you mind giving an old man a ride to the other side? There doesn't appear to be a passageway by foot. Reining his horse, the rider replied, Sure, hop on. 
Seeing the old man was unable to lift his half-frozen body from the ground, the horseman dismounted and helped the old man onto the horse. The horseman then took the old man not just across the river, but to his destination, which was a few miles away. As they neared the tiny, cozy cottage, the horseman's curiosity caused him to inquire. Sir, he said, I noticed that you let several other riders pass by without even making an effort to secure a ride. Then I came up, and you immediately asked me for a ride. I'm curious. Why? Why on such a bitter cold night would you wait and ask the last rider? What if I refused you and left you there? The old man slowly lowered himself from the horse, looked at the rider straight in the eyes, and he replied, I've been around these parts for some time. I reckon I know people pretty good. The old timer continued, I looked into the eyes of the other riders, and immediately I saw there was no concern for my situation. It would have been useless for me to ask them for a ride. But when I looked into your eyes, kindness and compassion were evident. I knew then and there that your gentle spirit would welcome the opportunity to give me assistance in my time of need. Those heartwarming comments touched the horseman deeply. I am most grateful for what you have said, he told the man. May I never get too busy in my own affairs that I fail to respond to the needs of others with kindness and compassion. With that, Thomas Jefferson turned around on his horse and rode back to the White House. When the people looked into Jesus' eyes, they saw the same thing. When we look to Jesus, we see the same kind of thing. Compassion, love, and kindness. Throughout his life, day in and day out, Jesus witnessed and experienced the misery of humankind. He was no stranger to human brokenness. The human brokenness of his day and the human brokenness of this day. The lame, the sick, the mentally challenged, the mean, the cruel, the inhumanity in the world. As he was growing up, Jesus saw the human condition all around him. He saw sickness. He saw death. He saw poverty. He saw brokenness. He saw brokenness in relationships. He saw it all. So when it was time for him to begin his ministry, he had already developed that compassionate heart that was needed. Now, he could do something about the human condition. He healed the sick. He gave support to the grieving. He not only told people, but he showed people about God's love as they experienced the human condition in the world around them. So when the crowds followed him, he did not send them away. He could not send them away. He could only have compassion for them. He saw their brokenness, and he extended the compassion of his daddy, God the Father. That brings us to our question this morning. If Christ had compassion on the crowds, what are we to do? If Christ has compassion for the crowds, what are we to do? Luther says in his commentary to Galatians, to love means to bear another's burdens. Christians must have strong shoulders to bear the burdens of their fellow Christians. We must have strong shoulders to bear the burdens of one another. We are to have compassion like Christ. Luther says we are to be like little, Christ, little Christ in the world. As you go about your life over these next couple days and over the next few weeks, I invite you to think about that and to pray about that, what that means in and for your life. How are you living out your call to have compassion, siponia, on those you encounter? How are you emulating Christ's sympathy mercy, love, and forgiveness with the crowds in your life. All those in the crowd. Not just those who love you or agree with you, but also, also those who don't. Not just those who share your beliefs and values, but also those who don't. Notice Jesus didn't take the time to sort through the crowd to determine who he deemed to be worthy or deserving. 
He didn't even evaluate how their needs measured up to his. He put their needs first. And he had compassion on them all. May God continue to bless us with that very saponia, even and especially when we don't deserve it. May God continue to empower us to be that very compassion for each and every person we encounter. And may we never be too caught up in our own affairs that we fail to respond to the needs of others with love and compassion. Amen? Amen. 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 safeguard all farm animals and livestock. 
Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O oh God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O oh God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all people who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, those who worry, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill especially those on our prayer list and those we now name aloud or silently. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O God. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and sustain our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O oh God. We give thanks for all who have died that are now citizens with the saints, especially Dottie, KJ, and others whom we name before you now. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O oh God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Would you share a sign of that peace with one another while remaining in your seats? <laughs> Our worship continues with the offering. If you were able to drop something in the basket on your way in, we certainly appreciate that. If you weren't able to, would like to, you could certainly do that on your way out. Of course, you can send a check into the church or go to our website or Facebook page and click on the donate button. We sincerely thank you for your support and for your partnership. And we thank God for the way in which, the ways in which he blesses our efforts and our offerings for his glory. Let us pray. Bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. May us be what we receive here, your body and the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also be you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite you to take your communion kit out of the Ziploc bag and hold it up. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Don't eat it quite yet. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant.
covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Would you pray with me the words our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. I'm going to invite you now to peel back the thin plastic layer on top and hold up your wafer. This is the body of Christ given for you, and you may consume that. Then if you would peel back the big tab to get to the juice. empties back into the Ziploc bag, and if you would drop those in the waste can on your way out, we would greatly appreciate it. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world and with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, may the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who provides for us, <coughs> feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Shelter 
lost, but now I am found. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It comes every part of me. My soul is silent. I am found. It's a beautiful sound. A beautiful, beautiful sound. Thank you. 